Well, hello, God bless you today. Bishop Patrick L. Wooden, Sr. here, and I'm so excited. You know, I've been, I, I always, I say I'm so excited all the time, but it's because it's true. One thing that I'm always excited about, my friends, is an opportunity to speak to you and to just share this moment with you. I love you, and I know you love me because um, you show it all the time with your prayers and with the comments and uh, uh, with your joining me for our uh, Thursday night church service. And you, you're either there, here, here, live in the sanctuary or with us online, and I praise God for every one of you. And May God's choice blessings be yours. Now, I'm actually in, uh, we'll be in Jackson, Mississippi this week at the Men Perfecting Men's Conference of the Church of God in Christ. And I'm so excited about being there with uh, my colleague, co-director of the men's ministry, Bishop Michael B. Golden, Jr. We serve under the auspices and the leadership of our presiding bishop, presiding bishop, J. Drew Sheard of the Church of God in Christ. And we we're in Jackson, Mississippi with some of the finest Christians in the world. And God is going to move by his spirit in a mighty way. We're expecting the Lord to save men and women, but it's a men's conference. Our, our goal is to strengthen men, to inspire men, to encourage men, to be men today. Uh, don't be ashamed of being a man. Don't let anybody get that, the, the notions of toxic masculinity and all that crazy stuff you see that's going on in the world today. We want to see men grow to be strong kingdom heirs, citizens both of heaven and earth, walking upright with their heart and minds, serving the God of the Bible, setting their affections on things that are above and not on things that are of this earth, and uh, being model citizens for Jesus Christ. Our children need to see strong men. Our communities need to see strong men, strong masculine men manly men, godly men, hardworking men, sanctified men, not men who are pretenders and going through the motions, but men who are leaders, men who are fathers, men who are, as I mentioned, masculine, men who are strong, men who are kind, men who are merciful. But yes, men, strong men. If there's anything our community is suffering from, is we're suffering because Adam is out of place. God is saying to the black community and even to America, he's saying maybe to your family, my friends, he's saying, Adam, where art thou? Too many, in too many cases, Adam is missing. Adam has abdicated uh, his responsibility. In many cases, uh, Eve has usurped her authority. We need strong men in place, men who will inspire their sons and daughters to, to learn, to go to school, to uh, make the best of this great country and this great land that we live in, to go to church. Praise the Lord to serve the Lord. Hey, dad, how about letting them see you lift your hands and praise the Lord? How about letting them hear you pray? How about from time to time leading the family in a family prayer? How about teaching them the word of the Lord? And brothers, let me tell you something. The, the likelihood that a child will get saved and serve Jesus goes up exponentially if dad is saved. Now it rises if the mom is saved. And it certainly rises uh, the likelihood that they will become Christians if both parents are saved. But if that father is saved and he's going to church, the family in most cases will follow him to church. And I want to say to the women who are watching, if God has blessed you and you have a saved husband who loves church and loves to serve the Lord, how about thanking God for him and stand right there beside him and the Lord will bless and uh, the Lord will continue to bless your family. Now, before I go, and we're going, we're having service here tonight at the Upper Room Church of God in Christ, and God is going to bless real good. But I have a couple of 
passages of scripture that the Lord gave me to share with you today because I want to remind you of something that you already know, but perhaps it, it will inspire you should I remind you of this right now. And th this passage is found in the book of Jeremiah chapter number 32. And it's two passages of scripture that almost read alike. They are blessings and it lets you know that we serve a God. We serve a God who can do anything. And when you follow the Lord's instructions, even if they may seem far out, such as the instructions he gave Jeremiah, uh, basically saying to him, this land is about to be taken. Babylon is about to conquer this property. This land is about to become Babylon's land. But you know what I want you to do? I want you to buy property in this land. I want you to pay for this land. I want you to get the deed for the land. And I want you to bury the deed. Put it in some earthenware. Keep it where to keep. Because guess what? Even though you're getting ready to lose it, you're getting ready to be dispossessed. You're about to go through. The nation is going through. But you know what? I'm going to do it again. I'm going to revive. I'm going to restore. And I'm telling you now, buy the property now so that when the when my restoration comes through and when I come through with my power and my glory, that property will already be yours and you ain't got to go out and try to buy anymore. I mean, what a mighty God we serve. And where is this? Listen, Jeremiah chapter number 32 and, and verse uh, 17, Jeremiah is praying. He says, ah, Lord God. And he says it with an exclamation. An exclamation point. Behold, thou hast made the heaven and the earth by thy great power and stretched out uh, arm with your power and stretched out arm. You've made the heavens and the earth. And then he says this. And there is nothing too hard for thee. And there is nothing too hard for thee. Now, somebody is going through some things today, and I'm here to tell you, do not be shaken or dismayed by the, 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 the bigness, if you will, by the enormity of what you're facing. Because someone's out there right now, I mean, you're not going through a cold. You're not dealing with a little sneezing. Your money is not short, uh, just a little short. There are some dire situations. There is nothing too hard for God. And in verse 27, God even says it. He asked the question. He says, God says this. Then verse 26 says, then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah saying, behold, I am the Lord, the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? Well, God was asking a rhetorical question. <laughs> the answer is no, there is nothing too hard for God. Now you remember my friends when you used to believe it just like that. But if, but if you're not careful, you know, the devil will come in and life happens and different things begin to happen and you turn the, you turn on the news and oh my. And then some of your, some of your, your fellow believers who used to, you know, be sources of encouragement. The many cases uh, you find that your, your previous sources of encouragement have been sources now of discouragement. Well, I want to remind you that there's nothing too hard for God, nothing. And if we approach him with that frame of mind and with faith in him, I want you to know that the God of the Bible will flex his muscles and show you and show the world and show all of them who are watching that there is nothing too hard for God, for he is the God. Now, listen to me as I close this. He is the God. David said, who prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Oh, I don't have time to go into what David was talking about, uh, to go into it very deeply, that is. Uh, but he was talking about, you know, Psalms 23 is one year in the life of sheep. One year. And while the sheep are grazing, while God uh, allows the sheep uh, to be led by still waters because sheep won't drink from running, rushing waters. They'll, they'll, they'll act literally uh, thirst to death. 
Um, uh, so you have to take them by still waters and then they can drink because there's peace there. And while God is uh, leading them and uh, as, as the shepherd leading us uh, into green pastures and we're eating the grass and drinking the still waters, we serve a God who looks into the future because he knows that the grass that we're eating from now will soon be consumed and there won't be anything to eat and that the temperature is going to change and the grass won't grow. So what are you going to do? Here's what he does. He goes up, the shepherd goes up into, he, he goes up the mountain path while climbing the mountain to go to a higher plane while climbing the mountain. That's called the valleys of the shadows of death. Mountain lions, all kinds of uh, animals and enemy of sheep hide, all right? He goes up there, and when David mentions a table before uh, me in the presence of my enemies, while the sheep are grazing in the valley, the shepherd goes up into the what's called the tablelands and plant seeds, seeds, grass seed, food for the future. Because he knows that what we, you're eating in the valley will run out. And it's not going to grow until the season comes back. But the sheep got to eat. So he goes up into the tablelands. Goes into your future. <laughs> Opens the doors. Make the ways. Praise God. Does, does fantastic things. While we're in the valley. Eating the grass. And drinking from the still waters. We look around one day and the grass is gone. Oh, what are we going to do? Shepherd says, don't worry about it. I got you. And he leads them up the mountain. Takes care of them. Make sure none of their, uh, the, uh, uh, the enemy attacks. Ready to fend off any wolf, any mountain lion, any enemy of the sheep. And all of a sudden, they go up in this beautiful place, and Gary, there's food everywhere. Green and lush tablelands. And now, they're eating again, thanking the Lord. I'm glad that I serve a God who knows, I serve not a God, the God who knows the end from the beginning. <laughs> Who knows what to do? He's never caught off guard. He prepares. He, his providence is amazing. Our God is previous. And he told me to tell you before I go to Jackson, Mississippi, he told me to tell you that there is nothing too hard for God. But I am the God of all flesh. Is there anything too hard for me? And that answer is a resounding no. So serve him with your whole heart. Believe him. Praise the Lord. Believe him. Go back to believing him like you used to believe him, like you used to believe him before you got, you know, smart. <laughs> before you got sense, you know. Uh, before you got like a lot of these people were when they closed the churches during COVID. You know, I know what the Bible says, but man, you got to have some sense now. You, know, you can't let nobody, don't let nobody fool you. Well, you got fooled. Well, you wasn't fooled by me. It was good old Fauci and uh, that crowd. They're the one who fooled you. I told you that God's a keeper. And if you trust him and you stand on his word and not forsake the assemblies of ourselves together as the man of some is, that he would see us through. And I'm on the other side and you're on the other side. I'm breathing alive and well and feeling good and in the Lord. I just had a checkup the other day, my friends. I'm as healthy as an as a ox. God is so good. And uh, I never got a shot, never got any of that. But I, but I tell you what I got, what I did get, covered in the blood. And you, whether you got a shot or not, you're here today because of the blood. You're here because the Lord spared you. You're here because God said, live. Now serve him. Believe him. Father, in Jesus' name, thank you for this moment. Thank you for this opportunity. Thank you for this audience. Somebody or some persons who are watching are in a strait. 
The enemy has tried to shake their faith, but we have reminded them today that there is nothing too hard for God. So then therefore the Lord wants you to prepare for a successful future. God wants your spirit to be filled with hope. Oh my, I feel right now, I feel hope. I feel a sense of a brighter day just flowing into somebody's veins right now. Praise God, the devil had you feeling that you were up against the wall and that there was nothing that could be done. Satan is a liar in the name of Jesus. So now, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you and we praise you that we, as we just peek through and, 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 and pull the covers back and just get through all this stuff that's going on. We thank you for being good and we thank you that there is nothing too hard for you. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, my time's up. Hey, you know, speaking of nothing being too hard for God, Brother Gary, check this out, Frank Saints. I'm gone, I'm gone, I'm gone. I know I go too long, but I just had to bring it up. Did you think that Roe v. Wade would be overturned in your lifetime? I must admit, I hoped that it would, I believed that it would, but I didn't think that it would, but God did it. And uh, uh, in our state, the state of North Carolina, <clears throat> uh, the deadline in the state of North Carolina, I just wanna share this as a testimony, uh, to have an abortion uh, is up to 20 weeks. To God be the glory, uh, God put some legislators in there and it has been cut from 20 down to 13. That will save an enormous amount of lives. And I thank God for that. Now, you know, we won't rest and won't be completely happy until it's eradicated altogether. But that is definite movement in the right direction. And that will equate to saving a whole lot of babies. And uh, 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 the, the governor has said that if it reaches his desk, Governor Roy Cooper, that he will veto it. But right now, the Republicans, and I, I've told you before, I'm a registered uh, non-affiliate, but I am for life, have a veto-proof majority. <laughs> and God did that. He touched one, one elected official's heart. That person shifted and went from being a Democrat to a Republican, and that gave a veto-proof majority so that if the governor does veto it, it won't make any difference. I believe every born-again believer will with me rejoice over this good news. Now, we're not finished yet, but we're, we're moving in the right direction. I want to invite you tonight to the Upper Room Church of God in Christ to join us tonight. As I mentioned, by the time you see this, I will be in Jackson, Mississippi, but we have church right here. And, uh, and God is going to use uh, the speaker that we're going to bring before you and you're going to be tremendously blessed. And if it's the Lord's will, we will all be together again the following Sunday, carrying on in the name of the Lord. God bless you and may God's choice blessings be yours. And there is nothing too hard for God. God bless you, my friends.